Hello, my name is Maria Miller from MathMammoth.com. In this video we're going to study order of operations and also some about expressions. And this lesson is for about fourth grade. Now, the order of operations says that first to do is anything inside parentheses. And then second most important is to multiply and divide, or divide and multiply, but from left to right. And then third in importance is add and subtract from left to right. And let's look at some examples here. Here's 2 plus 5 times 6. Do we do this operation first or this first? Now, it is very clear that we're going to multiply before adding, so therefore 5 times 6 is to be done first. And you can mark it, or the children mark it, um, by circling it like this with a colorful pen, or they can make a bubble around it or cloud around its fun. Okay, I've made a cloud around the operation to be done first, or bubble. So it's 5 times 6 is 30, and then 2 plus 30, 32. Here we have 2 plus 5 in parentheses times 6. That means that parentheses is done first. 2 plus 5 is 7, and then times 6 is 42. And even though this is already in parentheses, you can still make a nice cloud around it or something, you know, to make it look, look nice. Here's 24 divided by 4 divided by 2, and another similar problem. In division, since there's two divisions, we need to go from left to right. So start from this end and work your way through that way. So this here is the operation to be done first. 24 divided by 4 is 6, and then 6 divided by 2 is 3. Here, though, we have parentheses again, so this has to be done first. 4 divided by 2 is 2, and then 24 divided by 2 is 12. So the order really matters. We have totally different answers, even though the numbers and the symbols were almost the same. Just parentheses here. In this lesson, though, I want to concentrate especially in multiplication, addition and subtraction, not so much on division. So let's look at these. I have 1000 minus 200 times 2. Again, multiplication is done before subtraction. This first. We have 400 from this one, and then 1000 minus 400, 600. And by the way, you can try to solve these ahead of me, so to speak. You can pause the video for a little bit and try to figure out each one of these and before I solve them. Just to check if you can do it. Here we have 40 times 30 plus 20 times 60. Multiplications are done before the addition. The addition will be done last. So this one first here, and then this one, and lastly add. And this here is 1200. This one is another 1200. And so then we lastly add 2400. Now, 40 times 30 plus 20 times 60. But now there is parentheses here, so that is done first here. 30 plus 20 done first, that is 50, okay? And then there's 40 times 50 times 60, it's multiplication. We can do it from this way here, from left to right. But multiplication is special that you can actually do it in any order. So you could multiply 60 times 50 first. But it's equally easy to multiply 40 times 50, which is 2000, and then times 60, which will be uh, 12, 120,000, okay? Or let me do it this way, 4 times 5 times 6 and then tag zeros, right? And then I would have 3 zeros to tag to it, or, or times 1000. This is 20 times 6, 120, and 1000. Now here, there are no parentheses, so we go by this, multiplication first. That's going to be 15 there. And then there's additions and subtractions. So we go from left to right. So we do this one first, the subtraction first. 90 minus 15 first. And that would be 75. Then add 40, which is 115. Take away 5, 110. And then 20 times 10 times 5 minus 2 minus 7. There's parentheses, so this is done first, which is... 3, and now the multiplication is next, and subtraction last. So 20 times 10 times 3, 
This would be 200 here times 3 is 600 minus 7. We would have 593 there. Now we're going to look some at expressions. Expressions are basically number sentences, just like you saw here. They don't have to have the equal sign, just the, what I had on the board before we solved it. Those are expressions. And they just have numbers and symbols like plus, minus, parentheses, whatever. The difference of 20 and 5 multiplied by 2, how would I write it as a number sentence or expression? The difference means subtraction, right? You have to remember that. So that's 20 minus 5 somewhere there. And then it is multiplied by 2. But if I just leave it as, at that, then following the order of operations in this expression, 5 times 2 would be done first, which is not what I want. I want the difference, the subtraction done first, so I have to put parentheses into my expression. There. Now it's done. The product of 2 and 5 subtracted from 20. Here this product means that you multiply the numbers. So there's 2 times 5 somewhere here. Subtract it from 20. Now this here, it's going to be 10, its value is 10, and that is subtracted from 20. That means you have 20 minus the thing, right? So you have 20 minus this one. And this is not done. When it says write an expression, it doesn't say that we have to find its value or solve how much this would be. We just have to write the expression and we are done. Now some word problems too, and the idea is not so much to solve and find the final answer, but to write a single expression, single number sentence for each of these. And it is a little challenging for children, but it really helps them towards algebra. Okay, to start thinking with these easy numbers, easy operations, and put many operations together into single expression. Lisa bought seven pence for two dollars each and paid with twenty dollars. And what is her change? Okay, now if I just solve it without writing anything down, of course I go 7 times 2 is $14, right? And then I subtract 20 minus 46. So I did two operations. I multiplied and subtracted. So now I just write those into a single expression. The 7 times 2, $2. And then there's the subtraction, right? But do I write it here? You know, 7 times 2 minus 20? or 20 minus 7 times 2. Okay, I hope you can see that it has to be done this way, as far as writing it. So 20 minus 7 times 2. Because 7 times 2 minus 20 would be 14 minus 20. It would give you a negative number. And in this expression, you multiply first, just like the order of operation tells us. And then you subtract. And so you get $6. That's your answer. $6 is the change. Here, yeah, Lisa again went shopping and bought a $2 pen, a $3 keychain, and a $2.50 candy bar for each of her seven friends. What is her total cost? Okay, first I can think, how would I solve it without writing anything down? You know, there's seven friends and she's buying three items for each friend, right? So, I would add first... Like, if, if she was buying just for one friend, I would add these three things and find the cost for one friend. And then I would multiply all that by 7. So first I would add, and then I would multiply. Okay? So let's add here, or write down here the addition. And then whatever I get from there, I multiply by 7. Times 7. Also, times 7 here, either way. But, since the addition has to be done first, I have to put it in parentheses. doesn't really ask me to find the answer, but we can do so. This is 5, $7.50 times 7. Okay, that would be 7 times 7 is $49. And then 7 times half a dollar is three fifty. Okay, so we get... 52.50. Lastly, let's think of it the opposite way. We are given an expression, and then you have to think of a word problem or situation that matches that expression. $50 minus 4 times $8 minus 2 times $5. Like a 
It has money, so it's probably a shopping situation will work. And um, maybe you want to think for a while. I would say that here is somebody who went shopping and they bought four items that cost eight dollars. Maybe a piece of chicken. They bought four pieces of chicken and each piece is eight dollars. Then they also bought two pieces of cheese, each piece being five dollars. And then this here, it's subtracted. Okay, so this is, they, they paired with fifty dollars and uh, then this whole expression will give you the change, what change they will get from fifty dollars. Fifty dollars take away this thirty two dollars and take away the ten dollars, right? And this one here, ten times four times seven dollars. If we go shopping and um, let's say something costs seven dollars, an object costs seven dollars, but the person buys four of them, but they buy four of those objects for ten of their friends or for ten people. So they end up buying 40 of those. Let's say, for example, that the workbook is $7 and a teacher buys four workbooks for each of her 10 students. Okay, and um, that's it.